Karen Hodgins, creator of Nifty Numbers Math Medley and Dion with Geometry Family Math Night Kits. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest Family Math Night collaborative project, Fishbowl. And you can see how fabulous that turned out. What I love about this project is that each student is individually represented here um, by the fish that they created. So super fun. So I'm going to go over um, how to do the activity, the materials that you're going to need to gather in advance. And I'm going to talk a little bit um, about the math. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff that's going to go on um, this table for this project. And if you're familiar with my other collaborative projects, you know that I like to use a long cafeteria table. And then I section it um, in, into three sections, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. And that's because most of these projects have um, activities that are slightly different at each one of those levels. And loosely, the beginning level is like um, pre-K one, and then intermediate would be second, third grade, and then advanced would be fourth, fifth, sixth grade, um, like that. Um, so, uh, but at this, but I also had a smaller table off to the end, and that's where I put some extra supplies. Um, that's where I put the um, the super colorful cardstock um, that they're going to use to create their fish. And by the way, I do use cardstock. It's a little bit thicker paper, um, and it kind of holds up better than construction paper. Um, and that's where I also put the um, fish eyes book. Um, this is a fabulous counting book, and it also has some amazing, amazing pictures of fish in here. And I wanted the students to um, get an idea um, of some of the fish that they could possibly design. And then one of our curriculum consultants, um, Carol Durman, came up with a, another um, great idea because some kids really may not be familiar with how to draw a fish or be comfortable with it. Um, she created this for me. And there's three different fish on here. She got this from her How to Draw book. And we had at that, that table that I just talked about, that little extra table, we had um, these um, copies of these for students if they wanted to use them. We had, I had my little fish eyes book. And then um, we had all the uh, cardstock at that because it saved space for all this other stuff that I'm going to talk about in just a second that we had on the table. Um, so, because kids, it's a very crafty project. It's going to be a very, very popular station, believe me. Um, anytime you have glue at a station, it's going to be super fun. So, uh, so yes, you're going to need glue. And I had, I think I had like 10 of these spread out across the table. And then I, create, I got these. They're like little jewels. You can see them here sparkling on the fish. Um, uh, and, and again, I got this stuff at my craft store. I had little wiggly eyes, and here are the containers. So we had the containers spread out across the table filled with um, these items. And then I thought it'd be fun to have some um, ribbon if they wanted to use that. Um, colorful Sharpies, okay, whenever, you know, kids love Sharpies, so those were also spread out on the table. And you're going to need scissors. I think I had 15 scissors. You're going to need pencils, so 15 of those as well. And you're going to need rulers um, in inches. And I had rulers. Um, and then you're going to, oh, and then um, I had table tents. Because um, I divided the table into beginning, intermediate, and advanced, we put out um, our little um, table tents to kind of let people know where, where um, each level was. Um, all of the uh, Black Line Masters that I'm going to talk about in this uh, video can be found on our website at familymathlight.com um, under the projects tab. Okay, um, this is put together as a lesson and it does have the table tents in it. These can actually come from our kits, um, but you'll get um, table tents in, your, um, in the lesson plan as well. And then those Black Line Masters that I was just talking about, um, you'll need to get copies of those. So you're going to have a um, beginning, okay, so here's the beginning Black Line Master, here's the intermediate Black Line Master, and here is the advanced Black Line Master. And the advanced, by the way, also comes with this um, centimeter paper, so you'll need to make copies of that. Now, um, typically when I make copies, um, we have all of the beginning level copies in yellow. So um, here are the yellow ones, and you'll notice on the Black Line Master that there's two on there. So you make copies of that, and obviously just cut them in half. 
and then the intermediate um, is usually represented in green, and then the advanced in blue. If you don't have these colors, don't worry about it, it's not that important, but um, it's just consistent across um, the activities in all of our kits, and so they can quickly see, oh, yellow activities, that's the beginning one. I don't do the, I didn't do this um, grit, uh, centimeter paper in blue, even though it's at the advanced, I just kept it in white. Okay, so then you're obviously going to need a fishbowl, <laughs> and um, this was made out of uh, bulletin board uh, paper, um, so it's, um, yeah, bulletin board paper. Okay, so then um, the participants are going to come to the table and they're going to see these table tents. Again, it's, it's in the lesson plan. You'll get these table tents in the lesson plan. But this is going to tell them the step-by-step -step, um, how to do the project. So here we go. You will be designing a fish that we will add to our collaborative fishbowl. Number one, choose an activity sheet, beginning yellow, intermediate green, or advanced blue. Number two, design your fish according to the directions on the activity sheet. And then number three, add your fish to our collaborative fishbowl. Now there are some questions at the bottom here um, to get kids to think mathy. <laughs> uh, beginning, intermediate, advanced. I'm going to come back to those um, after I talk about the, the activity. Okay, so if you go to the beginning um, level, okay, this is what you're going to get. And now I'm just going to go over the little activity sheet. So number one, choose one of the eight and a half by 11 colored pieces of paper and design the outline of a fish that is greater than four inches, but less than 12 inches. So now you can see why we need those inch rulers there. Okay, they're doing some measurement. Number two, cut out your fish. Number three, Use the materials on the table to add designs to your fish. See if you can include some triangles, circles, and rectangles in your design. Okay. And then number four, it says describe your fish using numbers. Now, this part down here is once their fish is, is done, there's this little activity part right there that they can do. Okay. And that's where those shapes are going to come in because it says my well, my fish is blank inches long, so again, they're going to use that ruler to measure their fish. And again, our parents are there to help them. And then it says, my fish has blank different colors. So now they're counting. How many different colors did you use in your fish? My fish has blank triangles. And for each one of those geometric shapes, I actually included one there so that they could remember, okay, yeah, that's what a triangle looks like. Uh, my fish has blank circles, and then my fish has blank rectangles. And I also put a square next to that um, rectangle uh, because a square is a rectangle. It's a special kind of rectangle. Um, and so we want kids to be able, you know, they can understand that, you know, yes, it's a square, but it's also, um, it's also a rectangle. Just expose them to that is really what we're doing. Okay, so that's the beginning level activity. The intermediate level activity, number one, says choose one of the eight and a half by 11 colored pieces of paper and design the outline of a fish that is greater than four inches but less than 12 inches. They're using the ruler again. Cut out your fish. Use the materials on the table to add designs to your fish. And then number four says my fish is blank inches long. So again, they're going to be measuring. Okay. My fish is blank inches wide, and then my fish is blank in inches longer than it is wide. So they're going to be doing a little bit of an arithmetic problem there to figure that out. And in fact, it says here, how did you figure out how much longer than wide your fish is? Can you write an equation that shows this? So a little bit more math. Um, then number five, see the station facilitator for tape and add your fish to the collaborative fishbowl. And then the advanced is a little bit more advanced. One, using the centimeter paper, this right here, design the outline of a fish so that the total area of your fish is greater than 40 square centimeters, but less than 150 square centimeters. 
Find the area of your fish by counting the number of square centimeters. Make reasonable estimates for non-square shapes. Okay, there was a lot in there, but I have some great examples for them here. So here, you're gonna get an example of how to estimate the non-square, non-complete square area. And then over here, I give them a tip. It says a quick way to find the area of a large rectangular section of complete squares is to multiply the length by the width. And then there I've got a little example there of three times three equals nine centimeters squared. Okay, so I want to show you my fish that I designed. Okay, so here's the one that I did on the centimeter paper. And using that tip that I just told you about the length times the width, you could get a huge chunk of section right here, right? And if you multiply the length times the width, you'd know what that area was in square cent centimeters. And then you could do smaller rectangles around here. And then you could use the other tip to show you how to get the non-rectangular, to estimate the non-rectangular um, squares. Okay, so this is what they do there. And then it says cut out the centimeter paper fish. Um, so they would cut that out and then it would look something like that. And then uh, trace it on the colored paper. So they take the colored paper, trace it on that, um, and then cut it out again. And so this is what mine looked like after I cut it out again. And then on the back of this, they're going to write um, the area, um, the total um, area of their fish. Be sure to include the units of measurement, okay? And so we're trying to get kids, our students, to attend to precision, right? So if they wrote 66 on the back, well, 66 what? Um, 66 centimeters squared, 66 square centimeters, okay? And then it says use the materials on the table to add designs to your fish. And so here's what mine looked like. Super proud of this, <laughs> my little fish. Okay. Um, and then see the station facilitator for tape to add your fish to the collaborative project. Okay. And, they, and they actually really like doing that, deciding where they want their fish in um, the fish bowl. Um, the station facilitator that we had there was available also to help kids put it, um, this is actually pretty high, um, on, you know, up higher if that's where they, they wanted to have their fish. Um, be swimming. So then, if they choose to do this part, there are these questions that I talked about earlier. Um, and again, um, everything we do is beginning, intermediate, and advanced. So here is the beginning question. Most fish have great eyesight. They can see you watching them through their fish bowl. If there are three fish all staring at you, how many fish eyes are looking at you? And of course, they've got their parents there to help them figure out. Maybe they can draw a little picture of that and figure out how many eyes are staring at them through the fish bowl. The intermediate. The oldest known age for a fish is an Australian lung fish. In 2003, it was 65 years old. If it is still alive today, how old would it be? So now, they're crunching some numbers, right, to figure out how old that fish would be um, today. And then the advanced is a human has 7,000 taste buds. A catfish has four times as many taste buds as a human. How many taste buds does a catfish have? So they're kind of doing a little multiplication problem there. Okay. So this was, as I said in the beginning, it's a super popular station. Um, again, glue, wiggly eyes, fancy pens, and, and, um, and ribbon, and so forth. Um, it's going to be a very busy station. Super fun. We're sneaking all that math into, and the final product is amazing. So have fun.